We're about to move into our next part of our service, uh, which is the head of the year, the head of the month. And um, we have our very own prophet, Catherine Sykes, who is here, uh, who is going to start us out, and she's going to lead us in what thus says the Lord. So with that being said, so prophet Catherine Sykes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Woo. I'm so excited about what God is revealing, about what is coming in the coming year. And I tell you, it is going to knock our socks off. I'm excited about it, and I want you to be excited about it, too, because this is, and we're coming into, the greatest time for the church. And it's gonna, we're going to be so blessed to know that we were ordained for this generation. So without further ado, let me pray, and then we'll just jump into what God is saying. Thank you, Father. Holy Spirit, Father God, precious Jesus, we thank you for what you're doing in the church today, what you're doing in our hearts, in our lives. We thank you, Father, that on this, the Feast of Tabernacles, God, which is one of your appointed times, Lord, you came to tabernacle with us. And so, Holy Spirit, we invite you to come and to not just visit, but to dwell and to, to make a habitation in this place. And we thank you for what you're revealing, what you're showing us. Father, we're excited. We don't understand it all, but we know that you are on the throne. And Father, we trust you, we love you, and we just thank you for what is going to come forth tonight through your prophetic voice and what is going to uh, uh, challenge us to rise to those new levels uh, in you that you have for us. So we thank you and we bless you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen and amen. Well, we're excited. It's the uh, head of the year or the beginning of the new year on the Jewish calendar. And uh, actually, as Eric indicated, we're a couple of weeks uh, beyond that. But I'm going to just kind of walk through the timeline. You see, because God gave us a calendar, and according to his calendar, we entered into the new year 5781 at Rosh Hashanah, which literally means head of the year. And uh, Rosh Hashanah began on sun at sundown, Friday, April 7, 18th, and ended on Sunday, uh, September 20th. Did I say April? My goodness, I am like somewhere in the future. <laughs> At sundown Friday, September 18th, and ended on Sunday, September 20th at sundown. And in Jewish tradition, it is believed that God inscribes your name in the book of life for the coming year on uh, Rosh Hashanah and that on Yom Kippur, it is sealed. Now, Yom Kippur, which is the Day of Atonement, began at sundown on Sunday, uh, April. Stuck on April. September 27th and ended at sundown on Monday, September 28th. And the time between Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur is called the 10 days of awe, A-W-E, awe, like being in awe of God. And that is a time when, when we're to enter into a time of introspection and self-examination. And as we come to that day of atonement, we have searched our hearts, we're ready, and God seals 
our year in his book of life according to Jewish tradition. Um, the Jewish calendar starts from the day of creation and, uh, you know, currently we are in the year 5781. Now, we use the Gregorian calendar based upon the life of Jesus, so we're in the year 2020. Um, but let's look at the year 5781. Um, Rosh Hashanah is the anniversary of the creation of Adam and Eve. And it is believed that the world was created five days earlier. At least that is what um, Jewish tradition holds. But when you look at the year, you, there is a... What, each year is represented by a unique set of Hebrew letters, and they actually represent words, and they were originally pictograms. So if we look at the year 5781, uh, then we can read what it is that the meaning behind the year uh, is ordained or was ordained to be. Now, Last decade was the 70s, the uh, 5770s, and we went from 70 to 79, and then last year we entered into 5780. Now, the 70s were a decade uh, that the emphasis was on seeing and vision and being able to see and discern what God was doing. But then we entered into the 80s last year, last September, and uh, it, there was an emphasis on speaking. So we were seeing in the 70s, and then we moved into the year of the mouth, okay? And it was, uh, the emphasis was on speaking and expression and releasing and proclaiming and declaring. So if we look at 5781, now that we've entered into that new year, um, the, the term 5700 can be translated and literally read as, may it be the year of. 80 is the word pay. P-E-I, and it's a picture of a mouth and represents speech and breath. So as we, uh, in, as I indicated, last year it was about speaking and proclaiming, declaring, and now we've entered into the year 5781. We are in the year of pay Aleph, and Aleph, or Aleph, depending on if you're from southern Israel, um, <laughs> TC is the first letter of the Hebrew alphabet, and in the pictogram and the way it was originally pro uh, portrayed, it was a picture of an ox, and the it it signified strength, and uh, so the meaning of a leth is father, strength, leader. These are all meanings behind that word, Aleph. Um, and it also stands for unity and oneness. Uh, literally, Aleph is the number one in uh, Hebrew. So this is a year that we are to speak in strength the words of the Father. And your words you speak have power. And it's time to make decrees, it's time to make faith declarations, and it's time to walk in kingdom of authority. And then there were several verses that I received uh, about this, this season. One of the scriptures that is pertinent for this season is Hebrews 4, 12, which says, For the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and of joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. 
Another uh, scripture is Psalms 145, verses 10 through 12. And it says, All your works shall praise you, O Lord, and your saints shall bless you. They shall speak of you the glory of your kingdom and talk of your power to make known to the sons of men his mighty acts and the glorious majesty of his kingdom. We are entering a time where the church will begin to speak of his power, of his glory, of his kingdom, of the majesty of his kingdom. So that is a key scripture. And then there is a, another scripture that actually has carried over, and I still felt like it was really strong for this year as well. And that is Deuteronomy 32, verses 1 through 3. And it says, Give ear, O heavens, and I will speak. And hear, O earth, the words of my mouth. Let my teaching drop as the rain, my speech distill as the dew, as raindrops on the tender herb and as showers on the grass. For I proclaim the name of the Lord and ascribe greatness to our God. Amen and amen. So these are scriptures that are... Um, pertinent to what God is doing this year and things that we need to keep at the forefront of our mind. First of all, I want to encourage you that this is going to be a good year. It is going to be a great year, and um, it's going to be a year that we're going to look back on and we're going to say, what a ride. What a ride. <laughs> <laughs> but I've got several points and, um, that I felt that the Lord gave me. The first is, this is going to be a year of repentance. And it is a year with when we individually and as the church are going to begin to change our ways. God is reforming and just like the, the uh, potter and the pottery, he is making the church what he wants it to be. He is cleansing her. He is uh, reforming her. And as a result of this, and remember, repentance means that we're going one way and we turn and go back the other way. And as a result of that, there is, uh, we're going to change some of the things and the way we do things. Um, there will be a number of church leaders who will step down this year. And not all of them have been in sin. Some are just in positions they were never called to. And so there's going to be some change. God is looking for those that have a servant's heart to serve his people and a humility before him. Um, there is a new wineskin forming. It is forming now. And religious mindsets and trappings will not fit into the new. Uh, the Reformation is here, and while it may take time to see its fullness, you will see Reformation taking place in how the church is implemented and executed this coming year. Um, God, and this is really exciting, God is going to give revelation and then demonstration and man manifestation of the baptism of fire. And that is going to be an awesome thing for the church, an awesome thing for the church of Jesus Christ. There's going to be new models of gatherings and congregations that will begin this year. We see that in an obvious sense in terms of, you know, the, the um, 
the lockdowns that we've been in because of COVID and so forth, but it has it's going to serve as a catalyst to these new gatherings and, and ways in which uh, the church uh, does church. Um, we'll see new patterns set this year for gatherings and community transformation. Uh, the church is expanding outside of the walls, finally. We're going to see more and more of the church in action instead of just meeting. So uh, in Acts 6 and 7, this was the scripture the Lord gave me uh, for this point. It says, so the word of God spread. The number of disciples in Jerusalem increased rapidly and a large number of priests became obedient to the faith. And that is what I believe is going to happen as this, this cleansing, if you will, begins to take place. And that, that even those that maybe have not been walking as righteously as they need to become obedient to walking in the holiness because holiness is a key and we can sing about holiness we can walk in holiness or try to walk in holiness but the truth is is that holiness is going to be at the forefront of the move of the church in the coming season and the apostolic reformation is ushering in a clarion call for holiness in the church so we are going to see that um, <clears throat> the second point is the election is going to cause uproar. Um, there's going to be some civil unrest, but the damage done can be mitigated through prayer. Purpose in your heart to be a peacemaker this year. And when I, when I even said that and was writing this in my notes, Holy Spirit came real strong and said, that does not mean become a compromiser. So speak peace and wisdom to those around you before the election, because as you speak it ahead of time, when things want to, when the enemy wants to stir things up and bring unrest and, and disunity and violence and those sorts of things, you will have already paved the way for those that you know that could get caught up in that. Proverbs 15, 1 and 2 says, a soft answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. The tongue of the wise uses knowledge rightly, but the mouth of fools pours forth foolishness. Now, we're going to hear a lot of foolish things over the next month, but we are to speak life and peace. Um, there is going to be a governmental cleansing over the next year following the election, almost like cleaning house. Um, the government of the United States over the next years will become a beacon to the world. And the Lord showed me that after this next presidential term, that the president following that, that one, so the term after this next one, um, will bring a fathering anointing to the nation and will be called a father to this nation. And although it's chaotic because of things happening, um, there will be governmental stability for at least the next 12 years. Uh, I've seen out that far. I know that there are some prophets that are saying 20. I'm all for 20, but what I've seen is 12. So I'll, get, I'll catch up with them. <laughs> um, there will be another Supreme Court justice replaced in the next two years. 
and there will be another change in the Supreme Court within the next six years. Um, God is setting up the nation to move forward in a prosperity that will be sustainable. Um, now, I understand that, uh, in fact, Apostle Buddy had indicated to me that um, uh, another prophet had said that there would be a change, another Supreme Court justice um, replaced, and I, I believe that was Johnny Enlow uh, shared that word somewhere. So I, I, can, I feel that as well and have felt that. Um, another point. Russia will be exposed for its treachery in behind-the-scenes involvement in international affairs, specifically impacting the United States and Israel. Um, they are going to be exposed for using covert uh, economic strategies and schemes uh, that pulled people into uh, some ungodly and unrighteous activities, and then they use that to basically extort and blackmail uh, certain individuals. And this is going to be this is this is going to be exposed. There will be and fifth point. There will be another uprising in China. Uh, resulting in changes in that nation that snowball rapidly and destabilize uh, the hold of some governmental leaders in that nation. Um, another point is there will be announcements through NASA regarding space anomalies. And I didn't get a lot of clarity about that. I was saying, are you saying asteroids or planets or, you know, what, what is this? But what the Holy Spirit said is that they will actually, some will actually be signs in the heavens that will be brought forth. Next point, the church prayer movement born out of the desire for a godly election will continue its momentum under apostolic leadership. Many churches will return to becoming houses of prayer. The economy will shake for a season but will stabilize and to the surprise of many and the surprise of other nations will go up, up, up. Um, it's going to be a little rocky for a while, but it's going to, the economy is going to become strong. It is going to be vibrant. It is going to bring creativity uh, and release and, and value creativity. And in the future, we will see God bless the United States for its righteous stand on things that grieve his heart. Justice is very important to the Lord. And one of the things that is, and I'm adding this, this is not in my notes, but, um, but I have felt it and feel to release it. From the beginning of this nation, the um, Declaration of Independence was inspired by God but has never fully been lived out the way that it was intended by God to be. And part of that is injustice and racial discrimination and injustice. And God is dealing with that and uprooting out of the out of the fabric of the nation uh, he's going to uproot that root of injustice and we're going to see true justice all men are created equal and in the image of God and we're going to see that uh, made manifest uh, in the nation of the United States. 
Um, pharma companies are going to be exposed. It's going to start with a very large pharma company. And I didn't get an exact time frame, but it's within the next one to three years. Um, there's going to be uh, like a leaking of uh, some suppressed information that shows the corruption and the um, the scheming and the just the deviousness of the intention behind uh, some of the ways that pharma companies do business and the way that they uh, organize themselves and how they conduct business, um, you know, portraying to be for the good of the people, but yet withholding information that could truly be for the good of the people because uh, it would cut into profits. So some of that's going to start, and it's going to be like the like the straw that broke the camel's back. It's going to get exposed, and then other companies are going to be uh, investigated, and it's going to be found that it is pervasive. Um, they will reorganize, and uh, you know there will be a different form of leadership uh, in the years ahead, in pharma companies, they'll still be around, but it's going to change the way that industry operates. And then the apostolic is positioning profits into rightful places, and they are going to speak, and their words will carry a new authority in this coming year. We're going to see those who have been called. And this is something that is going to happen with all of the fivefold ministry, not just the prophetic. We are going to begin to see those who are true apostles and those who just have adopted a title. We're going to see true pastors and those who have just adopted a title. And the same thing with prophets, uh, teachers and evangelists. We're, we're going to see because God is raising, even as he's shaking the government, he is raising up his government. And because of that, it is going to require that the true and the false or the true and the presumptuous be defined. And it's going to become clearer and clearer as, as we move forward who is truly standing in that office called by Jesus Christ to be in a leadership position in his church versus those who have just um, taken the title and begun to operate in it. So it's going to be a great year. There are a lot of things that are going to be happening. Uh, I know that each of our prophetic ministers are going to drill down into some specific areas uh, that they've been assigned. But I can just tell you, we as the church are entering into our greatest days we have the ability to affect history. And if you have breath in your body, there is nothing that can stop you from fulfilling your destiny and accomplishing what God has ordained for you to do. You are here to be a history maker. And there is going to be a day in heaven when we are going to look back and we're going to say what an honor to be be chosen to be in this generation. What an honor to be uh, those that uh, were, were called to make an impact and a difference. And don't think that what you contribute is small. Don't look at what you see as the impact of what you are called to do or what difference it makes because every one of us alive today has the ability and the mandate to be a history maker in the kingdom of God. We have the, the changing one life, changing one perspective. I mean, we just do not know the waves of 
of, of impact that that will make throughout eternity. But everything that we are called to do, everything that you are called to do is important to the kingdom of God. And it makes a difference. And you are key. So know and take encouragement and know that you might have felt like you've been in the background. You may have felt you've been in the wilderness. You may have felt like you were just uh, a nobody doing nothing going nowhere. But let me tell you that you are coming into your greatest hour and that the things that God has promised you are going to begin to manifest and they are going to begin to be seen. And you're going to see on the backside of the desert, when you look back, you're going to say, I understand now why God brought me this way because I could not have achieved what he called me to do had I not walked that path. And you will be grateful and you will be joyful and you will come rejoicing in your inheritance. So take heart, church. Our best days lie ahead. The glory is coming. The harvest is coming. And we've got a little ways to get there. And it's going to be a ride. But let me tell you, we're going to come through it victoriously. And Jesus is going to be glorified in it. Do you believe that? Yes, let's thank him. Thank you, Father. Lord, we just thank you for what you're doing now. And Father, we thank you that this is an hour that we get to be a part of what you're doing. And Lord, that you will make clear what it is that we all need as we walk day by day in relationship with you. So Holy Spirit, I just ask you now as you come. I ask you, Father, to just seal in the hearts of your people, Lord, the importance of who they are. That, Lord, that they are called and important in this time. That their life is making and will make great impact for your kingdom's sake. So we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Well, that is my overview of what is coming. And so I'm going to ask uh, one of our elders, Jackie Marshall, is going to come and share <laughs> what the Lord is saying in the area of families and relationships. So would you welcome her, please? Glory to God. <laughs> Woohoo! Thank you so much. Wow, that was encouraging. Hallelujah. Can you say suka? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I sought the Lord on family and relationships. And he gave me a couple of things for this year. Uh, the first thing he gave me was he's touching marital relations in families. And he gave it to me that way. Uh, he's breaking cycles of estrangement in families. And for this month, I thought it was it just a little bit of a tickle to my heart because early on, he gave me, he's resetting the inner ears in families. And for Prophet Catherine to say that Deuteronomy, that, that passage is about give ear. Wow. It's nobody like our God. So sons and daughters, this is a year that I am touching marital relations in families. I'm causing new visions and spiritual energies. Where there have been blocks and barrenness, you will see that I begin to touch the vision in marriages. There will be new life released, new energy in the spiritual realm where you have found yourselves too tired to study my word together. I'm releasing in this year the spiritual energy to move together in your study time and in your prayer time. This is a year that I'm causing in marriages the actualization of your potential as a couple. These potentials have been blocked 
and I'm causing them this year to be unblocked. There are places that there have been curses that have been in your bloodline, and I am unblocking those this year, that you might move as a battle ax in your marriages, where there has been, because of the conformity to the world's definition of marriages, I'm causing an awakening, a fire in, in marriages to come alive, that you're going to define your marriage not by what you hear or see on the TV or what you read or what you see in the magazine, but it will be based upon my word and that fire that I'm releasing. It is a year that there is a congruency in the soft touches between a husband and a wife, the gazing upon the eyes, the smile, the gentle touch that I am causing to be energized in this year. This is a year that Psalm 121 is an anchor passage for families. What it will cause you as families to do, you're gonna look to me for your help. It will be an early start of the situation. And even as you do that, your children and your grandchildren, your relatives will see that you are looking first to me for your help. You're gonna experience a, a keeping power of me in this year that's coming up. Uh, I'm able to keep you and you're gonna experience it in great and marvelous ways. You're gonna, the word about a thousand falling at your side is going to come alive, but it will not come near you. And you're going to see that. You're going to see that the hotness of the sun is not going to smite you during the day. There will not be a burning by the enemy during this year for marriages. You're going to see that. It won't be a flame that causes you to even smell like smoke. Your hair is not going to be singed, nor will the moon smite you by day. It's not going to be a year in marriages where it's cold and lifeless as in the moon, where it causes a coolness. I'm awakening that coolness within marriages. And sons and daughters know that this is a year that I'm causing cycles of estrangement to be broken in your families. No longer will you be uh, losing the affection for one another and things grow cold. You don't talk to each other anymore. I'm dealing with, in this year, ungodly habits. I'm dealing with orphan spirits in families, which has caused uh, estrangement to happen because of the orphan. You felt like you, you have to protect yourself. You can't be vulnerable with your family members. But this is a year that I am breaking that orphan spirit out of your family. This is a year that in families, you're going to find that your conversations will take on weighty matters. They're going to be matters of the heart conversation. You're going to be talking about things that, 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 that people have concerns about that they haven't talked with anybody before. And you're going to be able to give them the answer. It's not going to be in a churchy knees type of way. But know, my people, that I've caused your compassionate heart and that which you have turned around and given to me, that it's going to flow up out of you in these conversations and it's going to cause your family members to see differently. This is a year that, that you will take on more of a discipleship form. You're going to help those in your families be more like Christ. It's going to be in ways that their responses, their emotions, their belief systems are more like Christ. It's going to be that you take on discipleship even in the things as appearance and dress and know, my children, that it's not just for the women, but the men in your families. They, you're going to begin to talk to them about the discipleship, the more like Christ, even in their dress, in their appearance. This is a year that discipleship will begin to have a preeminence in families. 
This is a month, my people, that I am resetting the inner ears in families. I am recalibrating auditory nerves so that they measure accurately as those frequencies go through the ear and touch the brain. There's, there's a shift that's happening that my word, and even as you confess it more out loud, it's going to change the very trajectory of families. There is a resetting in equilibrium, equilibriums in families. Every place of opposing forces or influences have caused imbalances. I'm recalibrating. I'm putting in order. I'm causing the frequency to be with my frequency so that that inner ear that's connected with the heart that the heart will begin to repent and out of that repentance will come a deep desire for authenticity and genuineness. And even with that, I'm connecting it so that that orphan spirit will have to give way, that the sonship will come alive in your families. It will be a year that sonship, that people will feel like they belong in a family. Therefore, it's going to posture them to hear from their heavenly father even greater because those places of rejection and abandonment abandonment I'm dealing with so that the sons in your family will arise and give me glory and that this is a year that I shall have my glory shine upon families. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's a good year for families. Thank you, Jesus. That is awesome. And um, yes, so that is just incredible what God, the family was created by God. He's the one that instituted it as a, a foundation um, of life. And so to hear what he's going to be doing, that is so incredible. And now we have Christy Bonham, uh, one of our prophetic team trainers, to come up and share what the Lord is saying about business and economy. Good evening. Oh, this word was so exciting as I was seeking the Lord for it. It was such a busy week. And I was like, Lord, when am I going to get the time to get this word? <laughs> and I hit this little sweet spot this week in worship. And man, he started downloading some stuff. So the Lord definitely has business and economy on his mind. Um, so for this upcoming year, particularly starting in this month, as it relates to the business and economy, uh, it's going to be a shift of focus, meaning that we are going to pivot our perspectives in new directions. We're going to revisit abandoned plans, and we're also going to do personal and professional assessments for the future. So my sons and my daughters, as I take you this month and start to launch you into what will be the next decade of prominence for you in your businesses and also in the economy, I am causing your pers perspectives to shift. There has been some damage that the enemy has done in terms of how you see me and how you view my ability to be able to turn around any situation. So I'm causing your perspective to shift away shift away from deficit, from roadblocks, from interference, from fr frustration, to growth, to provision, to uncommon advancements, and to peace. I want you to take your eyes off of what it is that the enemy is doing or attempting to do in this hour, and I want you to be able to see what it is that I'm causing to happen from the ground up. 
My sons and my daughters, it's a time for you to revisit these abandoned plans. I just saw pictures of people ripping up plan after plan after plan based on what 2020 has been. The Lord says, sons and daughters, I want you to pick back up those plans and I want you to bring them before me. I want you to seek me and I want you to be able to walk through those plans with me because I'm going to give you a strategy that's going to take this from being abandoned to viable in the next 18 months. I want you to seek me because I have an opportunity for each of those plans for it to come to pass at exactly the right time that I have ordained. This is also a time for you to do a professional and a personal skills assessment to determine what skills you are going to need in order for your business to grow, in order for you to grow professionally. I specifically heard the Lord speaking about the corporate marketplace, that over the last 20 years, the enemy has had a, a ferocious plan to destroy corporate America by specifically placing men and women who are evil in uh, positions of prominence. That season is changing now. These men and women are being dethroned, people who thought that they were above being held accountable for their actions. And what's been happening over the last five to 10 years is that these uh, Davids who've been on the backside being trained, their moment of being able to take down Goliath, it's coming. So my sons and my daughters, for those of you that felt like you are called to work for another person and to work and to do it well, this is your season. I saw, I saw a picture of the Lord taking his hand and wiping away the crud and this, um, this demonic campaign that says working for somebody else is the wrong thing. There are men and women that are being released in this season that have a uncommon level of ingenuity, of creativity, of momentum, passion, and determination to help businesses grow and thrive. And that is an actual strategy of the Lord in this season to get our economy turned around. And that is to release his Josephs, that is to release his Davids into these places that seem barren and reckless and for life to come back into these environments. The Lord specifically said that as it relates to ministry in the marketplace, this is the time of fire igniting it on another level where men and women who know that they are ministers of the gospel, that they are uh, uh, peacemakers, that they are bearers of the image of God, but that they know that they're called to be out in ministry in the marketplace. This is your time and your season for you to get into your place of your assignment. And this is the reason why it is important, vitally important in this hour for you to find out what it is is that you're supposed to be doing and for you to get there as soon as possible. And that's in education, that's in mentorship, that's in sponsorship, and that's in training for you to be able to go from where it is to where you are to where it is that you want to be. The Lord says, I have an army of those who are intellectually astute that are going to be, that are going to be released in this hour and who will completely undo the works of the enemy that have happened in the marketplace over the last 20 years. So there's going to be new CEOs, there's going to be new uh, CFOs, there's going to be new CMOs, there's going to be new roles created for the uh, intellectual mastery that these people are going to bring into the marketplace. The same way 10, 15 years ago, something called a social media manager wasn't even heard of this group of people, they're gonna usher in what will be the next big thing in terms of career development and advancement. And what's gonna happen is that once these men and women get put into place in the marketplace, you're gonna to start to see what was an exile from wanting to work. You're gonna see people come back and wanna work. You're gonna see things like community be brought back uh, to the workplace. You're gonna see integrity and trust be brought back into the workplace. And then you're gonna to start to see what was uh, little shoots of prosperity for a couple of big organizations. You're gonna see it, again, start as a groundswell and then it's gonna go all the way from small businesses all the way up to large businesses. And what's happening is that the fear of the Lord is hitting men and women in terms of how they lead. Those days are gone where people could do evil for decades and get away with it. 
They will do evil today and tomorrow they will be gone. There is zero tolerance as it relates to the kingdom of God when it comes to how businesses will be managed and how this economy will be stewarded. As it relates to big manufacturing, there's also going to be some open doors of opportunity from internal operations for small batch manufacturers to be able to help to produce some of the essential items. There is still some strain that's going to happen over the next three to five years as it relates to essential goods out in the marketplace. And for some of the big companies that have long supply chains to be able to get things done, they're going to rely on smaller manufacturers to who produce high quality goods to be able to get those products into the hands of people. Also, as it relates to textiles, there's going to be new scientific discoveries that are going to happen in the textile industry because of what has happened with COVID, meaning that people are going to want to um, protect themselves, physical bodies in new ways. And there's some scientists that God has given some downloads in terms of how textile can help to protect the human body. Also, there's going to be new FDA regulations on products that we use every day. Um, what has happened in the last, uh, over the last year is that we found out that some things that we use every day are not safe for us. So the Lord has some men and some women that he's given insight and strategy and some blueprint to help to recreate how we manufacture products for things that we have to use every single day. And then last but not least... The Lord wants his children to know in this hour as it relates to his business, to, to business and economy, that there is no lack. I just saw a spirit of fear running rampant over God's people during this hour saying, well, there's not enough. There's nothing for me. I can't get promoted during this hour. It's not going to happen. And the Lord says, hush and silence that voice. There is more than enough. There is newness being flowed out of heaven your way for what it is that you need in abundance and in overflow. So Lord, we thank you. Thank you for your word. Thank you, Christy. That was awesome. So exciting what God is doing. I mean, everything is, we are truly in a reformation. Exciting. And next we have Daryl Spearman, one of our prophetic team captains, is going to share what God is saying about the U.S., Israel, and superpowers. Amen, amen. Bless God, he is good. So um, as it relates to nations, I, I had a couple of dreams uh, for various things. Um, I, I had this one dream where I was actually in uh, Uganda, and I'm at the service, and there's this voice in the background trying to shut up what's about to take place, which was a testimony about Jesus. And um, finally, the person uh, shares, and there's such a boldness and authority, and he speaks about how he's been there for like the past 16, 18 months, and just how revived he's been. And, I, I, and from that, um, there's revival fires to be burned in Uganda, and it won't just affect them, but it will also affect the peoples from other nations. And that won't just be for next year, but I, I, there's going to be even a longer period of where that revival fire is just burning. And I, I, I was uh, in a different dream. I was in Puerto Rico, and I was walking around Puerto Rico, and um, I saw a storm um, coming. <laughs> Uh, a harsh storm coming, and um, what became strange was it didn't have the impact which was thought that it would have. And um, what the Lord was showing me about that was was that um, two things: one, in the natural, there would be a storm, but it wouldn't have the the impact that people would naturally think it would be. Um, they would be a spectacle in a sense. And also the financial storms that people are enduring there, um, the end result of that from, from COVID and just being locked down, um, they also would be able to come out with a smile. It was very odd. It was a spectacle. And um, that, that's actually one of my overarching categories is God is 
uh, creating spectacles out of different nations and areas. And one of those areas is like Portugal, Spain, that region um, expect um, some some spectacle behavior from warnings to God's graces as well. And um, I heard the Lord talking about Israel. He said, my love burns hot towards Israel and it doesn't come without correction, but uh, there is a bigger door for the sharing of the gospel um, this year within, within Israel. And because of God's love, we'll see technologies, methodologies, and weapons, and prosperity still coming um, from that nation. And um, I have one other dream I'd sort of like to share. I was, I was aware that COVID had sort of passed, and there was still a hesitance um, towards, you know, not having masks, but there was still, uh, you know, fun and familiarity with other people talking and, and chit-chatting. But um, as I pressed into that, I felt um, around April, May, right around spring and summer, that there would be a shift um, pertaining to that. And my another point, uh, there is a disruption coming around the election. Um, but also, there, within this year, there's a respect for the Heavenly Father where God's people have misjudged how God has been taking care of things. And there's going to be a real respect and reverence for how God has actually been operating and making things uh, work. And so I'll just move from there. I got tons of... Oh, and my word for this particular month in general, uh, it may seem like uh, the, a little quiet... Um, right before a storm, but I, I heard God just start talking about his identity as to who he is, and he said, I am your shield and protector, and so even as people are fearing uh, police, and I heard police crisis um, come up too, and that was not just for the U.S., but that was like Uganda as well, but then there being a shift and God just doing a bunch of great things, but I'm going to uh, just go, go ahead and flow from there, bless God. <laughs> Um, sons and daughters, know that I'm going to make spectacles even around the nations. You'll begin to see signs and warnings even as to what I'm doing in, in the nations, even around Portugal and Spain and Puerto Rico and Uganda, where I'm going to cause my fires of revival to begin to burn, where you'll begin to see a transformation even in the economy, where the economy is able to now flourish and where there was hate and distrust, where there'll begin to be unity and community because I'm creating and producing love even in the nations and even in the financial storm that seems like it's brewing even around Puerto Rico I'll br bring life new life that the people my people will be able to smile right after the storm and even in the middle of the storm as it seemed like waves are coming and beating upon the nation but I'm going to bring transformation and Israel know that my love burns for you hotly and there's going to be new technologies methodologies that I continue to bring and breathe through you. And even when it comes to your leaders, some of the leaders I'll begin to replace, some I'll reinstate, but there's a, a, a transformation that I'm doing not only in Israel, but across the nations where there's been corruption, even with the leaders where I'm going to begin to bring a shift as to how things are done. Some people, they will change in position. Some people, I'll move out of position, but I'm exposing corruption when it comes to the how finances have been handled even where it was supposed to go to the communities and in, 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 in different parts, like very specific communities, it was supposed to be used. But even at the local levels, I am bringing uh, an exposure and a removal and a transformation even of heart where people had the wrong heart at the time. But I'm going to begin to shift that. And there's a disruption that is coming around the election. I saw the streets sort of being messy. And, and I heard Oklahoma. And I heard Portland. Um, and, and know that this is not a time to be quiet. Where are my prophets that will begin to arise and speak and declare even in your own areas, even in your own communities, even in your own counties, begin to declare my will be done. Begin to declare the unity of the Father uh, coming and taking over those areas 
And it is also a space not to be quiet, but to begin to speak out even where there are there's false advisors. There, there's some wrong messages sort of being sent across the airways. And I need my people that will just speak the truth. It, all, it won't just be to like point out what somebody's doing that's wrong, but to begin to declare the truth of what it is that I'm saying about our nation, about the United States of America, who it shall be and who I've called her to be in the example that I've called her to be begin to begin to speak that and uh, this year I'm going to begin to show myself even at a new level uh, as Jehovah sit canoe the Lord our righteousness and I'm going to just show my righteousness being revealed all across the nation it will sweep in California it will grab a hold of New York it will break parts of Atlanta but it will move and shift and bring chaos into order and I saw a bear and it sparkled and yes the market the there may be a bear market it, but know that I'm going to bring a shift even to the market and even the country known as the bear Russia know that I'll begin to expose the plans that they've had um, even against America and even against surrounding nations towards them and this month do not fear do not allow yourself to begin to walk in fear in this nation where uh, people are afraid of, of how things are going with the police and uh, how things are, are going to shift and change and even the uncertainty. Know that I'm establishing myself as your shield. I'm establishing myself as your protector and I'm establishing myself as your provider. So don't fear as to what you're going to have or whether you will lack. I have you. Thank you, Jesus. Glory, glory, glory. The nations belong to God, and he is the Lord over all the earth. Wow. Thank you, Daryl. Um, next, we have uh, Eric Etheridge, one of our prophetic uh, team captains. He's going to be sharing what the Lord is saying to the church at large. So if you're a member and love Jesus Christ, and you, then you're a member of the family of God, and this word is for you. Amen, amen. I asked um, uh, Keith to come here and do a prophetic demonstration of what uh, one of the things that God showed me. So if you can, just a quick prophetic dem demonstration. Amen. So what God showed me was, um, as it relates to the church this year, he showed me literally like that. It was a wind that was turning. It was turning and it was a fire. And God said that it was literally an eastern wind that was blowing on the church. It was an eastern wind of fire that was blowing on the church. And he said even as it begins to come to the church, it's going to begin to um, burn up some things. And it's also going to begin to um, usher in. Here's what I have right here. It says, he says that it is a wind of fire. Intercession will bring a birth of a new fivefold apostolic authority in the church. He said there will be a new apostolic portal that will open up that the church will yet step in. And he said that this will literally be birthed through intercession and it will birth a fire where dross will begin to burn off and that there is literally a new wine that's even beginning to be released upon the church of a refreshing fire. It's, I have it right here. It says through the cry of prophetic intercession, a fresh fire of the Holy Spirit spirit is being rekindled in the church that was one thing then the other thing that God showed me um, was he said there is a greater release of uh, of disturbment and here's the scripture he gave me he gave me uh, John 7 24 it says do not judge according to the appearance but judge with righteous judgment he said don't begin to look at what things see but actually go in a little deeper and I will give you the revelation so that the church will not be deceived or be carried away. One of the other things God said, this is a time to walk. Uh, this is the time for you to walk your walk. And, and it says like this, this is a time for, you, uh, for the church, for the, uh, excuse me, for the church, uh, for the church, I'm going to say it right. This is a time for the church's walk to align up with the talk. That's what he said. This is a time for the church walk to align up with your talk. 
For no sons and daughters, that this is a time that I'm even blowing a fresh wind inside the church and I'm beginning to burn up all the draws, the draws of religion, the draws of tradition that has tried to hold the church bound for many years. For this is a new decade where I'm beginning to release a new fire of my Holy Spirit and it will be yet even uh, uh, kindled through the fire of intercession. For know that there's an intercession uh, uh, hubs that are beginning to grow up even around the portals uh, uh, and and not just the portals but in around the the borders of of the uh, the United States for their they're popping up here and there they're popping up in Georgia they're popping up in Texas there are intercession portals that's even popping up in the uh, area of California and down through Milwaukee and it's coming across even in Montana for there's a fresh intercession portal that is even coming around Maine and it's beginning to draw up and then you will begin to see that those networks will begin to even come to one another and then through this uh, through the birthing process you will see that intercession will begin to grow and it's going to grow like fire and and that the apostles and the prophets will begin to grow up and they will come together into full fruition. And I'm talking about the apostles that will stand, the, uh, uh, the, the prophets that will just stand, and they won't just be releasing, thus says the Lord. They will be the ones that will be equipping the saints because it's now time for the saints to begin to step into their full authority. For you are going to be the ones that go out to do the miracles. You are going to be the ones that go out into the marketplace and begin to change because I'm coming back for a glorious church. And you are the ones that release a new power for you're going to see that there's yet an impartation in the church for no, for understand that the church cannot be done the same as it was before because I'm beginning to change those things and I'm beginning to bring a new order of church where people won't just come that they will just sit to be preached to or sit to be taught but you're going to be the ones that begin to step out and do what I say and you're going to find yourself that even as the draw is beginning to, to come off because of the fire is burning hot inside of you know that this will be a time where there'll be a strength and there will be a power that arises inside of you and you will go forth and you will shine like gold in the days to come and you will be the ones that will shine in the marketplace you will shine in the community you will shine wherever you go because you're going to be my people and as you begin to shine you will find that many people will come to you it's going to be like moss to the flame that they will be yet drawn to you and you're going to speak what I say to you you're going to begin to release the prophetic word and you will see that the harvest is plentiful and it's now time for you to be begin to release my voice, to release my power, and see that there's a fresh anointing that's inside of you. And even as you begin to release these things, come in an alignment with me because there's a new plowing, there's a new strength that I'm even releasing inside of your household. I'm beginning to release inside the church that will begin to stand up, and you will find that the church will be the ones that will yet stand. They will be the ones that will lay it, uh, lead many uh, in the community. They will be the ones that will lead in righteousness. They will be the ones that will lead even in social injustice. And they will begin to say what I say. No more will there be any wavering. No more will there be frustrating. And what that's been happening is that, that the church has been frustrated. They've been standing in the wings. But now I'm beginning to release them so that they could be the ones that lead into righteousness. They will be the ones that say, community, we got this and we have this. And they're going to be the ones that lead in this time and they're going to bring many to righteousness you will find that there's going to be ones in the street that will literally give their lives to Christ because of what I'm doing and, and how I'm beginning to move and understand that in this rebuilding process I'm beginning to tear down some things and beginning to rebuild some things I'm beginning to build the walls of church again and I'm cutting and pruning away many things so uh, don't get uh, discouraged even when you see some things beginning to be removed but yet there's some new things that I'm asking Adding, it's going to be some new innovative things, a new way of doing things, a new way of reaching people. It's not just going to be a, 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 a just a local move, but it's going to be an apostolic move that's going to spread throughout the world. And there's going to be interconnection and there's going to be unity within inside of my church. And you will find that even there's going to be many people that's going to release the same prophetic word. And they're going to be preaching the same thing because I'm bringing unity inside of the church at this hour. Hallelujah. And the Lord said, this is a time when I'm releasing new discernment. For there are many voices that have been released inside the earth realm. While I'm even bringing a new uh, sound in the prophetic and a new revelation in the prophetic, the Lord said that there is the enemy has also brought a counterfeit that is rising up. But because of the discernment that I'm even beginning to release inside of my church, you will begin to be able to judge what is right and what is wrong because of the anointing and because of that freshness that I'm releasing upon my church. And 
and you will begin to see the ones that will speak up and call uh, things that say that they are uh, error. No more will there be any cowardness, but there's going to be a new release of boldness that will begin to speak against those lying tongues that have been released and understand that even as the miraculous and the power that is being released inside the church, there are lying uh, signs and wonders that will also be released. But my people will begin to rise up and judge those things and judge individuals by their fruit that they have. And you will begin to see the righteousness begin to come because there's truly a division. Everyone that says that they are for me are not for me, but I'm beginning to shine the light on who is and who isn't because there is a division that's coming and you will begin to see those uh, who are of truth and those who are not. So begin church, I'm beginning to do a new thing with inside of you and I bring in a righteous judgment to the church and I'm bringing the church to get to a point and I'm rising the church up to get to a point to speak to those things that are of unrighteousness and understand that it is now time for the church to begin to align uh, to become now it's time for the church to get to a point to where their walk will align up with their talk and as the church begin to get in order as there is alignment that's coming understand that as you come into alignment with me as you come in alignment with the decrees and declarations that I made because it's going to require a response not just to sit back and receive it but now is the time for the church to begin to respond to the prophetic words respond to the decrees that's been spoken and begin to walk those things out and as you begin to walk those things out and as the alignment comes you will see that I will come alongside of you and it's going to be like a three four uh, that cannot be broken because of the power and because of the strength that I have for you and you will see that there will be many things that will be broken in this year. There will be cycles that are broken. There's going to be uh, uh, there's going to be curses that will be broken. There's going to be many things that's going to be broken off of your life for where there's been uh, hindrance and many walls and many uh, barriers that have been hindering you, that's been hindering the church. The church is literally going to go through those things with power and with anointing because I've called for you to take new territory and this is your time to go forth and do those things hallelujah and the Lord just this is the last thing and I'll end with this and the Lord said um, as I said a couple of weeks ago this is the last thing that God said to me it's literally four words that hey God release uh, to Zerubbabel and God said this I am with you and that's all the Lord said, that no matter what we have to go through this year, because there's going to be many winds that's going to blow, there's going to be many changes that's going to come, but understand that no matter what you have to go through or what you have to face, I am with you this year. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Well, if, if that doesn't excite you about what God is doing this year, I don't know what, what would. Because he obviously, I mean, we are in a critical time in history. And God is doing some incredible things uh, among us and around us. But through all of it. He is with us. So thank you, Lord. Well, we believe that uh, making declarations are a part of aligning with what God has said. So I'm going to invite the prophetic ministers to come back up. And we're going to uh, say these declarations together. So if you're here in the congregation, if you would stand with us, and we're, gonna, uh, we're going to uh, make these declarations uh, to align with the word of the Lord for the year 2021 57 81 we're going to align with his word amen amen, amen. so we're going to start with elder jackie hallelujah for family and relationships we decree we decree the refiner's fire is welcome, the refiner's fire is welcome. to touch our mouths to touch our hearts so that we can discuss matters of the heart with our family. We decree that marriages in our family will receive new vision and spiritual energies. We decree in Jesus' name this is the month, the inner ears
years in our family are being reset by God. We will measure correctly through our auditory nerves. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. I declare that I am an agent of change. I declare that I am a history maker in God's economy. I declare that my mind is shifting focus. I declare that my mind is shifting away from deficit to God's growth. I declare that my mind is shifting away from roadblocks to God's provision. I declare that my mind is shifting away from interference to God's uncommon advancements. And I declare that I am shifting away from frustration to God's peace for me. I declare that every plan that the Lord has given to me will produce fruit in this earth. I declare that every plan that the Lord has given me, that he will give me the pace, the timing, and the strategy along with his wisdom to bring those plans to pass. I declare that I have all the professional and personal skills that I need to advance in my career. I declare that a promotion is God's destiny for me. God, I thank you in advance for my promotion. I declare that the Lord has a company of like-minded men and women to gather me to. This will be my circle, my think tank, to come up with creative ideas, witty inventions, and to be able to solve big problems in the marketplace. I declare <laughs> that I am zealous for the gifts of the Lord. And the gifts that the Lord has for me in this season is to increase my intellectual capacity and horsepower to be able to do more. I declare that as the Lord advances me in his economy through business, that I will operate in integrity. In integrity. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 Uh, I declare I'm stepping into the covering of the Lord. I will walk in his health, in his protection, and his wealth. I declare that America will overcome adversity, and I will be filled with love, greater unity, and justice. Amen. All right. For the church. Uh, I declare, I declare that, the church that the church will walk through, will walk through the, new portal the new portal that God is releasing, that God is releasing. and that the apostolic power, and that the apostolic power will fall on the church, will fall on the church and, the church will be a and the church will be a living demonstration 
in the earth realm. In the earth realm. And I declare, I declare the walk of the church, the of the church will align with the, the talk, of the talk of the church. And God will bring, God will bring an alignment with the, three with the three for his glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I declare that this year that I'm walking into will be the greatest year of my destiny, of my purpose, of my ministry, and what God has for me. I align myself with heaven and declare that I shall serve the Lord with my whole heart and I will walk with holiness all the days of my life. Thank you, Lord. Change me from the inside out. Baptize me with fire and cause your holiness to arise in your church. Amen, amen. If you agree with that, let's just give him praise. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Well, you know, when we enter into a new year, we want to enter in with our hearts right. We want to enter in with our, uh, with our souls cleansed. We want to enter in with a pure heart. And so we'd like to take communion together with you tonight. That in this beginning of the new season, the new era, the new year, that we enter in together to, uh, to receive all that God has for each of us. Because let me tell you, we need each other. Every one of us is important every one of us and without you the body of Christ would be in lack because God has a purpose for your destiny in the church so I'm going to give you just a moment to go and find some implements uh, uh, some crackers some bread uh, some grape juice some, some wine whatever it is uh, to represent the, his body and his blood and uh, I'm going to serve the elements to the team here we go Implements at home, elements at home that you can take to join us in communion. You know, there's power in unity. And as we come together today to receive the bread and the juice in representation of his body and his blood, we do it together because we are part of the greater family of God. So I trust that as we enter into this, that your heart would be set on him. So just take a moment, and if there's anything in your heart that you feel that you need to just say, God, forgive me. If there's anything that you've fallen short or you just... 
you just need to start afresh and anew this day. Just ask him to forgive you. He's right here. He's right here. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. So Eric is going to lead us in receiving the bread. And this is the... Uh... As we come to Jesus, broken. Jesus also had us in mind when he was to endure the cross. And he was broken for us. And he gave his body. And so this bread is a representation of him. And a representation of his body being broken. So let's take and eat together. to receive the, the representation of his blood that was shed for us. Father, we do not do this lightly. We acknowledge the depth of the cost that you paid to redeem us, to free us, to break every stronghold over us to bring us back into right relationship with the Father. Lord, we cannot thank you enough for it is so great and you are so great. So we thank you for the blood of Jesus that cleanses us, that sets us free, that causes us to be a new creation that causes us to be in you and you in us. We receive this blood now and we thank you. Thank you, Lord, for it. Take and drink. just spend a moment with the Lord and let the praise and worship team just lead us into just a time of thanking him. No matter where you are, stand and sing this beautiful declaration with us. How great is our God.
is all we need to go forward in a year into the new year with joy, with expectancy, with excitement at what he's doing. And now is the time that we get to bring our offerings, our tithes to the Lord. At the beginning of this new year, our first fruits that we can bring to him to say, God, I align with you. I hear your word and I receive it and I am with you. And so I want to encourage you to participate at whatever level you can in this head of the year offering. And we're going to get instruction on how to be able to give for those of you online in just a moment. And uh, our own Pastor Samuel is going to, uh, to lead us in how to give tonight. Discouragement tries to, discouragement tries to uh, hinder your power to believe God. But when you get your eyes fixed again on him, it shifts everything. I'm not sowing just to sow, Woo. but I'm trading in the heavenly realms. I'm storing up treasures in heaven where moth and rust does not corrupt and where thieves do not break in and steal. Hallelujah. Hey. Yes, Lord. Let's read it together. We declare that we were made in the image and likeness of God to live an abundant life in him. We choose to put on the mind of Christ and declare that we are full of divine wisdom for innovation, witty inventions, and creative ideas. We free ourselves from every limitation that would keep us from bearing much fruit. We declare favor on our jobs for promotions and advancements, divine increase to our businesses, homes, families, resources, bank accounts, ministry endeavors, and investments. We will purchase property and acquire land debt-free for kingdom purposes. We will have more than enough to live a debt-free life and to be able to bless others out of our overflow. We will demonstrate the kingdom of God everywhere that we go because... In Jesus' name, let's worship strongly as we give today.
we have the opportunity to respond even with our giving. We also want to extend an opportunity for those out there who may not have made Jesus Christ the Lord over your life. We want to extend you that opportunity. And we want you to come into relationship with our Lord so that you can live a life that is pleasing to him and that we want to make sure that your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. And for those individuals who have not made that decision or have not made that confession, if you would, and you want to do that now, please pray this prayer after me. Say, Our Father, I ask you to forgive me of all my sins. And I ask you, Lord, to come into my life and I make you, Jesus Christ, the Lord over my life. And I ask you, Lord, to give me your Holy Spirit and fill me so that I may live a life pleasing to you. If that was the first time that you have made that confession or prayed that prayer, we welcome you to the kingdom of God. For we not only rejoice here, but the angels in heaven are rejoicing because of that declaration. And we would love to hear from you. And if you, if you made that confession, please send us a testimony at salvation at lifecenter.org. Again, that's salvation at lifecenter.org. And we will have someone to pray with you. We just love to hear what God has done. And so as we come to the end of this service, we also have another portion that we will enter into. And that's our online ministry where we have a prophetic team in the house ready to release uh, God's word over those individuals who will come on to the next uh, Facebook service. So here's what I would like for you to do. Once you close out of this service, give us about five minutes or so, and then we will start a new service. And then we will start our, start our online ministry, and we'll go from there. We'll give you instructions. All right? So right now, let's close out in prayer. And um, we thank you for coming. We bless you. So, Father, we thank you, God, for what you've done in this service. Father God, we seal it in the blood of Jesus, Lord. And, Father God, we just thank you for your blessings, and we thank you for your, your unmerited favor and your love. So, Father, I release the blessing upon everyone online. Father God, let your favor upon favor cover them, and let your grace, Lord God, be abounding in their lives. So, Father, we honor you. We bless you. We thank you, God, for this day. It's in Jesus' name we give praise and glory. Amen. Hallelujah. And thank you.